So when we are talking about returning multiple values from Kotlin, there are actually multiple ways of doing it. So first of all, there is Kotlin coroutine. Now, if you are, um, you know, okay with asynchronous programming, and if you're already using Kotlin coroutine in your project, you can do that, right? You can use Kotlin flow to re emit a stream of values, and you can just like emit multiple values. And yeah, you can just do that asynchronously. But today we're not going to talk about that because I think, you know, flow itself, uh, you know, requires a single topic. So let me know in the comment below if you want a topic on that. I'll make a video on that. But today we're going to talk about, you know, how to do them synchronously. So in Kotlin, there are multiple ways of doing it. First of all, there is the class called pair. Uh, that actually allows you to return two values. Then there is triple that al will allows you to return three values and that's probably it. So what we'll, we're going to do today is we're going to create our custom class with which we can actually return more than three values, right? So for example, if you want to return five values, well, you can do that. So yeah, let's get started. So before I actually deep dive into how to create a custom class, let me just show you how the class pair and triple works in Kotlin. So let me just get into this pair class here. So P-A-I-R. And if I go into the class, you can see it's basically a generic class, right? It, it takes two type of values and stores them in its two variables called first and second. And that's, that's basically it, right? And if I go to triple, sorry triple yeah you can see it's basically the same thing it takes three type of values and stores them in three variables called first second and third so let's actually see an example so i'll create a function so i'll create a function here we'll call it return all it will take two integer x and y And it will return a pair of integer and integer so what i'm saying here it will return two values both of which are integer but it does not necessarily have to be you know both have to be integer you can actually specify i'll actually show you what i mean here right so first i'm just here returning an instance of the pair class here with x and y as its parameter because i specified both will be an integer and i'm taking both an integer right so let's go ahead to the main function here and i'll create a variable called result and I'll call this function called return all and we'll pass the value 2 and 4, right? Both of them are integer. So let's go ahead and create two variables, two other variables. One will be called first and it will hold the value of the first variable of result. So I'll just basically call result.first and I'll create another variable called second and which will be equal to result.second. If you're wondering, uh, you know, where these values come from, like I showed you before, these are basically just, you know, the field of the pair class. So now if I go ahead and print them, right, so I'll just print the values. And as you can see, the first value is 2 and the second value is 4, exactly how we passed it, right? So now, actually, let's go ahead and modify our function to take another parameter. It will also be of type integer and we'll now return a triple. And actually, let's not let's not return uh, you know, three integers. Instead, let me just show you the variation you can have here. So I'll just return two integer and one double, right? And z will also be of type double. So we'll return a triple of x y and z and this will be a triple right so now as you can see we have an error in this function because we need to pass a double here so i'll just pass 4.7 okay so now let's go ahead and create another variable so val third 
which is equals to result the third again third is basically just a field of the class triple and as you can see if i press ctrl q it shows me the type of those uh, variable and you can see that the third is of type double second is of type integer and first is also of type integer let's go ahead and modify our print function here And if I run this, you can see that the first is 2, second is 4, and third is 4.7, exactly the way we passed in, right? So that's all cool, but what if we want to like return 5 values, right? Now Kotlin does not have anything built in, so what we can do is we can create our own. And creating class in Kotlin is not that expensive, right? So let's, let's go ahead and create our own class. So you can say class, and I'll call it custom return. You can basically call it whatever you want and we will you know use this angular bracket now what does this mean here we're telling that okay this class will be of generic type so this means that we do not know the type of the this class can be used for any type of values right so i'll actually show you just just like the way we passed you know two integer and one double for triple we, we can actually do that here as well so we're making it generic so we're not binding it to a specific type of values right you will see what i mean so i'm passing in an a p and c so all of these are types like so it can be an integer double or string whatever it, you know it doesn't matter right so we're passing in that and now we'll actually give its parameter so inside this first bracket so let's go ahead and name those parameters so there will be a variable called first which will all which will be of type a there will be a variable called second which will again be a variable of b a variable called third and so on you got the idea right so A variable of type e you know uh, there will be a variable called fifth of type e and that's basically it right we have already we have created our own generic custom return class now let's go ahead and use it so first let's go ahead and modify our function return all and apparently i have actually run out of alphabet so i'll just change them to x from xyz to a b and c so that you know i can have my own uh, I, can, I can actually continue adding parameters so d would be of type let's say string you know like i said you can have any kind of type for any variables so we can because it's generic right so and you let's say e will be of type float and instead of returning this triple class here what we can do is we can return our custom return um let me just change the custom to capitalize it because that's the convention so custom return and inside the angular bracket we need to pass in its type so the first one will be an integer second one again an integer third one will be a double fourth one will be a string fifth one will be a float and that's it right and instead of returning a triple here we'll also say it's, it will be a custom return and a b c d and e right okay now as you can see we have an error here because we need to pass other values so for the string let's let's call it you know yes it works right okay and for e i'll pass in 5.89 and don't forget to use a f because it is of flight type float and by default when you you know input decimal in kotlin it actually assumes you are uh, inputting a double not float so let's go ahead and create the rest of the variables so fourth and fifth and it will be of result dot fourth and result dot fifth okay so and if you actually you know again hold ctrl plus q you can actually see the type of them and you can see that this is exactly the type we mentioned in the return you know signature of our class uh, sorry of our function so that's cool. 
Now let's go ahead and modify our print function to print them. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so as you can see, we are getting exactly what we are expecting. So, and of course, you can modify the class to like return 10 or even hundreds of variables. But you know, the real question is why you would do that. But yeah, you know, you can go crazy with it. Um, so yeah, this this is all cool. But you know, writing this, you know, result dot first, result dot second, every single time is it's kind of boring and not the way of Kotlin. So let's see a you know better way. Now this is optional. You know, you, you can watch it, you cannot, you can just stop watching here because there's nothing to do with um, the, um, the return thing, but it's, it's just a nicer way of writing code, right? It's just a bit of optimization here. So let's go ahead and what I have to do is type val and inside the first bracket, I will give the name of the variables. So first, second, third, okay, fourth and fifth. And what I will do is outside this bracket, I'll set all the values equal to result. Now, of course, it's giving me an error, but to fix this error, all we have to do is come to our class and, you know, give it a data, um, what can I say, data signature over there. So uh, we, we ba we're basically making it a data class. Now the error has been gone. And it, as you can see, uh, if we just run this, we're basically getting the same result, but we just changed our five lines of code to just one line of code and that's it and again if you're curious let me show you what what is happening under the hood uh, how is this class working in java uh, just to scare you a little bit but yeah if you're not interested you can again um, stop watching here but this is how it's working so it, it basically generates few components for us you know the way we actually for mentioning it as a data class and there's a lot of scary code here but yeah okay so that's it see you in the next video